So, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the vein mm -hmm. stuff. I stand a lot all day long, and you know, and I've seen people with uh, varicose veins, spider veins, and then, and then they get these pockets of fluid in their in their legs, and, and people use the Ted hose, and then yes, right. the, the old days, they talked about vein stripping, and, and I, I know that's a kind of a barbaric way for a physician like you to think about it, but uh, what are some of the things that you can do for people who have those issues, the, the varicose veins, the spider veins, the, the problems with their legs? What are some of the techniques? So I started um, doing vein about um, 13, 14 years ago, um, and um, prior to that, as you said, vein treatment was a um, little bit barbaric. It was not successful all the time and it was not pleasant for the surgeon and for the patient. Right. Uh, oftentimes it was considered cosmetic and when it's needed, uh, they did the vein stripping, which is required general anesthesia, being mm -hmm. in the hospital, pain afterward, and scarred. And the worst part is I've had a high failure rate, about 35% recurrence. So uh, the word of ultrasound opened up our eyes to a lot of things. One of them was vascular and vein. So we were able to identify uh, venous insufficiency or venous reflux where the blood flowed backwards in your vein and hence advanced treatment down. So uh, varicose vein usually, most of the time, is hereditary factor associated with environmental exposure. Okay. So you have family history, mom, dad of varicose vein, plus you stand on your feet all the time, you're on concrete all the time, you lift heavy, then, or you know, you have vitamin deficient and, 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 and uh, you have diet deficient in vitamins, then you might be developing those varicose veins. Women gets it more than men, but men slowly gets it. So, in the past, as I say, it used to be considered as a cosmetic right. uh, therapy. Then we found out what well, people have leg pain, leg heaviness, legs get tired, they're not exercising better. When they finish their shift, they're done because they, they just want to get to the couch or the recliner and elevate their legs. They have restless legs at nighttime. So a lot of things that affect your quality of life. And oftentimes, just people contribute that to old age. Right. Then realize that they're suffering from a condition called venous insufficiency. So normal circumstances, your vein are tubes that takes blood back from your legs toward your heart, and they can do that against gravity. Okay. When the vein fail, usually you have deficient valve or several valves. And the blood, instead of going back to your heart, it goes back toward gravity, toward your feet. Because of that, the pressure rises. When the pressure rises in the leg, they're not feeling good. They're feeling heavy. Now you're holding extra blood. That All that blood is not going back to your heart. Because of that pressure rise, the pressure has to go somewhere. So all these still tiny vein, that comes off your your vein, it become dilated to accommodate for that extra pressure in the blood. And then you start seeing those very close veins, the ugly thing underneath your skin. Right. So often time what I see in an indicating an underlying problem, it's usually your greater saphenous vein or your lesser saphenous vein are refluxing and they're not your valves are not closing adequately and allowing the blood to go toward gravity. So um, we do a physical exam, we do a vascular ultrasound to determine if you have venous reflux or not, and see where the venous reflux, and then map the vein and see where these very close veins are originating. Um, then we'll uh, discuss what treatment option. Treatment option has become very, very easy. Outpatient procedure does require general wow. anesthesia, topical anesthetic, you walk in, you walk out. Wow. I had mine done, I went straight to the hospital rounding of my patient, came back home, elevated my legs. So it's it's very, very easy with, with, with minimal downtime. The only thing I don't like about it is I couldn't lift more than 10 pounds for about a week, so I wasn't able to do my routine workout. Right. But you can do your aerobic, so I'll you know, walk in, uh, in about two or three days you'll be able to go back on your treadmills with no problem. So in a 10-day period, you're back to 100% normal. And as I say, the procedure is done here in the office. 20, 25 minutes, you'll be done. Um, of course, um, we do it in sections. So we, first, we take care of the underlying problem, which is the venous reflux. And then we'll address those visible pericostic. Those visible pericostic can be uh, broken down into a two category. 
some are medical, some are cosmetic. Okay. The insurance company made an arbitrary cutoff, saying anything less than three millimeters in size by ultrasound is cosmetic. Okay. Anything over three millimeter is considered medical, and you can treat that. Treating those also become very easy. Um, we, you know, we, in the past we used to just make cut, pull them through the skin. Now we have some sclerosing agent. You can just inject them with them, and um, they'll turn a little brown, then they disappear. There's still some time, you know, the case or two, really, we have to pull them through the skin, but I haven't done one of these in over a year right. because of, you know, the, the beauty of the sclerosing agent we have. As far as the uh, other treatment modality, we have radio frequency, we have laser, and most recent, we have the glue, super glue. That's the easiest one of all. Uh, it's still uh, relatively new, so only Medicare pay for that one. But soon the insurance company will follow. But this one even doesn't require a topical aesthetic. Wow. All you do is you put an IV in the vein, you just go in, put the glue, come out, you're done. Right. Yeah. So the, the, you know, the good news is technology is improving and uh, ultrasound makes things visible and safe. So uh, we'll do everything with the ultrasound guidance. We see exactly where we're uh, closing the vein and where we're positioning all our instrument, all that stuff. Everything, nothing done blindly. Uh, so it's been, it's been amazing, and the result is great. So I know a lot of a lot of uh, women, um, they feel like if they wear shorts or a skirt or something like that, they don't like to have the visible veins. So even though in their mind it may be cosmetic, the underlying is probably medical. So even if you're thinking you're wanting to do this cosmetically, they need to come and see you because insurance may cover it because it could be a medical necessity and get that covered, is that correct? Uh, you correct most part. So uh, sometimes you see a little spider vein on the, on the legs, and most of the time those are usually cosmetic. Even even with the spider vein, we we'll continue to do a ultrasound just to make sure there's no underlying problem. So when you have the problem with the vein, you don't have a symptom right off the bat. A symptom may take a year for them to develop. So sometimes you may start seeing some spider vein that could be indicating you have underlying bigger problem, but you may not have symptom. Once you become symptomatic, then it becomes medical problem. I see. As long as the only problem that you're seeing is just, you're seeing the vein, you don't like it, that's probably a, it was still a cosmetic issue. Once you start to have those symptoms that are affecting your daily living, or you have to take ibuprofen at the end of the day to keep the day going on, then we're talking about a medical issue. Okay. And uh, if it's a medical issue, then that's why you have insurance. Okay. Uh, if it's just purely cosmetic, then um, you, you know we'll take care of it, and it'll be not a pocket expense. And a lot of time, I see a patient, and there is two issues: they have a cosmetic issue, and they have a medical issue. They do have the pain, or they have a blood clot in the past, or phlebitis, or a skin rash, or skin changes because of the uh, varicose vein. And also, they have some unsightly vein at their ankle that they don't like. So, oftentimes, we start with the medical, address the medical part first and then we move on to the uh, cosmetic. Unfortunately, you cannot address the cosmetic until you address the medical part. Okay. But we separate it good for them, them, okay, this is what your insurance cover, and this is what you don't cover. And a lot of times, it's a good rule of thumb. I tell them, I measure it on the ultrasound. If it's less than three millimeter, at your expense. If it's more than three millimeter, uh, we'll, we'll go to the insurance and get authorization. Okay. Is there any advantage? So you said that the, sometimes people start experiencing the symptoms Mm -hmm. But is there any advantage for people to come to you before they're experiencing symptoms? Because if you can catch it early, then maybe the symptoms won't occur. Is that correct? Is there any advantage to that or there, there is well, no advantage? Uh, unfortunately, there's no proven methodology of preventing the advancement of venous disease. So we all wear those nice compression stockings. Uh, but there's no literature proof that if you wear them, they will alter the course of the disease, uh, prevent you from having okay. a, a slightly better future. No proof. They might help, they feel good. I, I wear them in the winter time. Mm -hmm. um, I wear them when I uh, work out in the winter time. They feel amazing, they give me good support. So right. when I'm doing my spot, I'm, you know, I feel my, my veins are supported. Uh, but there's really no proof that they will uh, 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 prevent you from having this. So I don't see any advantage if you're not having any symptom. But if you have a uh, any vein that will make you feel vain about yourself, like I had a lady the other day, she was not wearing a short for five years after she had her child. Hmm. And just because she had a tremendous uh, vein that pops up after her second child, and she was having symptoms. 
but her primary care physician did not know or didn't kind of make the effort that, you know, there's good modality that will help her. And so we were able to help her medically where we got rid of her symptom. Same time we help her cosmetically when she's wearing a dress. Right, right, right. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time today. But I want to let everybody know that um, in the description, if you'll cl click on the description, uh, we'll have all your information down there so people can reach you if they want to make an appointment or yes. come and see you. But I didn't even ask you, are you taking patients? Are you, are, are you too busy? Or can you see a well, few people? Uh, uh, I, I am too busy, which is a, a good, <laughs> good, good problem to have. But I'm never busy for what I like to do. So I love what I do. My staff love what they do. So that's why we make a great team. So we always sure. welcoming new patients. Okay. Yes. Dr. Basha, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We'll see you next time.